Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here to go over elementary row operations and how we use them to begin working toward those echelon forms. These elementary operations for matrices come from the idea that we should be able to take any useful operation for elimination that we would perform on a system of equations and apply those same operations to a matrix to help with row reduction. The first operation is swapping two rows of a matrix. So if you think about a system of linear equations like the one on the left here, it should not affect the solution to our system at all if we simply list the equations in a different order. So changing the order of the listed equations in the system is completely okay. Similarly, it's completely valid for us to interchange two rows of a matrix, and this won't affect the overall solution that we get. We'll go ahead and keep a running list of the elementary operations down here in the left corner as we go through them so we don't forget. We also know that it's okay to multiply an entire equation by a non-zero constant, and that won't harm our solution process either. We specify non-zero here because we don't want to lose an entire equation of information multiplying by zero. I mean, if we're going that route, we can just multiply all the equations by zero and claim our homework is finished, but for the sake of actually solving, we want to use a non-zero number. So let's say I was thinking of doing some elimination on this system, and I want to try and eliminate the x1 terms in the first two equations. I might see that multiplying the top equation by negative 2 is useful. We know that's valid. So the equivalent process with our augmented matrix over here would be to multiply row 1 by negative 2. So we can swap rows, we can scale rows, which just means multiply them by a constant. If we think about how elimination with systems actually works, once we decided to multiply this top row by negative 2, we would then add those two equations together to eliminate the x1 term and be left with an equation containing fewer variables. We might then set that equation aside and come back to it later once we had other information about x2 and x3 in this case, for example. In our augmented matrix, this becomes the idea of adding a multiple of a row to another row. The same scaling by negative 2 happens to the first row, and then we add it together with the second row. Once we have this new row information that's equivalent to the equation we got over on the left here, we don't just set it aside. We need to find a place to store that information back in our matrix. If you watched our video about echelon forms, you'll remember that we like having zeros below lead entries. So we might choose to store this new information where row 2 used to be. When we do that, you can see we start to take the first steps toward that look that contains a lower staircase of zero entries. We'll be real specific in our next video about the process of how to decide where we want those zero entries to go. But for right now, let's just complete our list of acceptable elementary row operations. So we've got swapping two rows of a matrix, we've got multiplying a row by a non-zero constant, and we have adding multiples of rows to other rows as our elementary row operations for matrices. Coming up next, our video on the row reduction algorithm shows you how to use these row operations to get your matrix into one of the echelon forms and start solving systems. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next one.